as post-production personnel, we love helping filmmakers to, to reach that final vision. Uh, they've, they've done whatever they can in production, but uh, I think in editorial and colour grading and mastering, we help them to maintain fidelity and creativity throughout the process, and I think we really deeply enjoy doing that. The creative process uh, is incredibly, uh, it's a miracle. I would call it a miracle when the synergy of a lot of creative people can come together and agree to disagree. Like, they disagree and agree at the same time, but they're always for the best of the project and at the end they can have copy and be friends. In some ways, I truly, truly love um, what I call in Singapore the Kampong spirit. I think even though we don't live in Kampongs anymore, I think Singaporean crew tend to be very helpful towards each other. Working with Jinping in widescreen, I think that Colour is so important actually because uh, before that, to be, to be very honest, I knew I was doing a horror film but uh, to have the perfect colour look, actually I don't have the perfect idea. I think for Ghost and I, I think they veer very far away from what uh, most typical Singaporean films tend to do or what Singaporeans tend to see in Singaporean films. Um, I think they were going for a very contrasty, very daring, very um, high contrast dark, low-key kind of feel for the horror film. You know how Alexa looks. It, had a, it, had a, it has a certain characteristic already. It's there. It has a tint, you know, a, its own tint. So how to work with that and still create something different? Because if everybody uses Ari Alexa, then the colour is there. What, what, what's the point? So there's something more than what. So thankfully, we have Jim Ping and we talk about horror movies and gradings and uh, there's the Hong Kong look, the Thailand look and all that. Well, ours is a bit in the middle. We, we try very hard to create something new. Pushing the limits of the technology, both in terms of software and hardware and the process, it then gave the artists, uh, Ding An, Bing Huat and Jim Pin, the freedom to say that now we can be even more bold in our approach. When we shot it with the Ari Alexa and the result came back like this, it had the amazing and ridiculous sharpness. Uh, we've done uh, some work with Alexa before, but nothing quite as extensive as Ghost and Air, so it was a really interesting experience for us. Singaporean film, we already engaged in this technology. Uh, it, was, it was a great joy. Like, he, he, helped, he helped me sort this out. He bring, brought the expertise to me. He showed me, like, this is what I've done. This is uh, some commercial I've shot on Bing Huat, uh, on the Ari Alexa. It looks like there was a, almost like no light. It was, the lighting, of course, it was from him. He knew how to light with it. That was very important. They had a very even look, but it's totally lit. There are corners, there are, there's a depth. So what was really amazing for us is as we worked through the footage, we saw that there was a lot of detail, there was a lot of information, uh, both in shadows and, and especially in the highlights. He knew the capabilities of the Yari Alexa, but he, he would know where the limitations, so he would not push beyond the darkness level. He kept it bright and Po Jinping could crush it down. We were very, very, really, really very pleased with uh, the flexibility that it gave us, um, whether it was bringing details out of the shadows or just e irrigating information from the highlights. It was just a really amazing experience for us. And I think that overall, I think um, they were able to create a lot of very distinctive looks. So in the really dark areas, we can still see detail. That's, that's the beauty of it, because if, if it was not lower res or whatever camera, you will lose the detail in the dark, but now we want the detail and yet we bring the light down there. You have to guess there's something in the shadows, but you're not really sure, but there is detail, the lines are there. And then, yeah, this is a totally different level for horror film. I like that very much. And because of that, I think Chimpin had was able to then really uh, push the envelope in terms of what she was able to create in terms of looks. For example, there was an entire scene that was shot in the daytime uh, that, that needed to look more horrific and a lot scarier and also needed to change its time of day. So it became a day for night shot. And uh, when I see that shot now, I'm still amazed by the way it looks. And again, that's because of what the production team was able to bring back uh, to uh, bring two posts. So I thought like uh, after what he shot, the product of what he shot, I think his style complements quite well with white screen. Like both of them work ten in hand. Um, he, her colours and his lighting and then the way that the angle lands is brilliant. I think that the tonality, the, the, the distinctiveness of the looks is something that we rarely see in Singapore cinema. And I think it's very different from what a lot of audiences perceive to be Singapore cinema's look. Um, they were, and I, I think, in part, part of it had to do with 
I think technology enabling us to push the limits even further. So things like speed grade, things like CineSpace, things like the, the processes and the workflows we would set up really emboldened us to push it further. Uh, working with Jinping, we created a distinct and unique colour to the film. The process, well, it is... I like, to, I like to work with creatives and I kind of let them be creative as much as possible. I dictate nothing as much as possible. Really, I'm just the judge. I'm like, well, it's good, it's not good. So she went about, she took, a, she, she took the time to go and like really come up with something new. So I think that's where technology really liberates the artist. And I think because the artists were liberated, they understood the process would hold up in to, to all the way to the final result. It enabled them to be very creative in, in their approach and the looks that we're trying to, trying to create for Ghost on Air. So the film was released in like most, both digital and film. And uh, my personal preference, well actually very tough to say, <laughs> now come to think of it. Because I admire like, I admire the film in a kind of a very clean digital look. In my mind, 35 is the gold standard. So to me, I, I always felt that, that I was going to prefer the 35mm version more. And of course, it took a lot more work to get that accurate. A lot more correspondence, a lot more travelling, a lot more just money and effort put into 35. So in my mind, I always thought the 35 version was going to blow me away and it was going to be my favourite, personal favourite version. So on the digital, it looks so much better. But there is this thing, there is this thing about film, which is that when you print it on and then there's that grain, there's that look, there's a bit of off colour. Not, it's, it's exactly the same colour, but it's a bit, how do you say, a bit more faded, a bit more vintage. And with that, I uh, don't know why, uh, it's still, I think, still nicer. Because I've seen it in the cinemas, there's digital and there's film already. Personally, I, 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 you know, I, I see the beauty of the digital, the cleanliness. It was just a really pristine image, uh, what we got in the digital projection. Uh, in a way, it sort of converted me. I hadn't been converted prior to that point. I was still watching a lot of 35mm celluloid. But after seeing the result, side, almost side by side, I mean, we, we watched them back to back. Uh, almost. And I, I have to say that I think I'm actually, uh, I actually prefer the digital output. It's not an opinion that everybody shares. Um, I know that of, even among my staff, some of them prefer the, the 35mm film. And for nostalgic reasons, I love 35 as well. So yeah, film for me, la, but I totally respect the digital and they're going to go totally digital soon. You know? That's where we're headed. But I think in seeing the result, uh, I would actually say that I think digital is the future for projection at the very least, if not acquisition. What I really respect is the high def. Yeah, it's, it's the game changer. It will change everything in the future and that's true. For, for example, the fact that a 35mm print, no matter how good it is, eventually might get scratched, might get fingerprinted because of handling, might degrade over time, chemicals will fade, etc. Um, but uh, this digital looks the same every time you play it back. So it really recreates the experience for the audience over and over again. I think one complaint that some filmmakers have is that it's too sharp, too clear. Uh, and to, to me, it's just a matter of fidelity. If I can give you back what you saw in the ed editing suite, that makes me happy. When I translate it into the digital release, it's exactly like what we shot. So we get exactly what we wanted. So you have Jim Bin who was able to push a look further, Bing Huat and Ding An could make more creative choices. And we knew it would hold up because we knew the process worked. Thankfully, we came out with something very interesting such that the journalist would say, wow. Uh, for the first one, to the naked eye, the first look is, wow, well, this one looks, this film looks good. <laughs> you know, even to myself, I acknowledge that, you know, so yeah. Thanks to them, great, great work on the colours. I found that the filmmakers really, uh, really, really pushed the envelope in this film. I think uh, we're very proud to be associated with the film. Uh, because uh, I think the, the filmmakers had many, many different brush strokes in, in their entire palette. Mm -hmm.